well everyone are aware about the cad modeling how exactly we do what are the different softwares we have all those things we know but what we can do with the help of the knowledge based system for doing that cad modeling that's what we are going to uh, know today uh, so before going to the actual topic um, i wanted to spend much time on explaining what exactly is the knowledge based system and then how to integrate that knowledge based system with a cad software and what we can achieve if you are able to integrate the knowledge based system with the cad modeling system so this is my uh, 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 presentation now so let me start with the knowledge based system and then i'll go with the actual some case studies as well so <clears throat> what is a knowledge based system so in short we call it as kvs also so it is just a, a computer program that uses a knowledge to solve the complex problems so knowledge based system is a, uh, a simple um, it's not a simple uh, computer program it's a bit complex one uh, but it uses the knowledge base to solve the real world complex problems that what the market is facing or industry is facing so in fact its journey started in um, uh, 1960s um, in fact this the kbs systems all those uh, came to existence to the common man or to the market it, it started in 1960s so in 1960s general purpose programs were uh, developed that means the kbs based uh, things but we have certain issues with those but um, those systems are not uh, they are not producing the breakthrough so somehow the researchers are market uh, not ready to adapt uh, to the actual uh, uh, industry in those days of course they are working but they're not that convinced so what they wanted to do is um, they wanted to do, uh, do they wanted to do much more strength to that so the researchers realized that the problem solving power of the program that is a kbs program comes from the knowledge it possesses so the researchers what they did is uh, they wanted to give the much powerful knowledge to the system so that it can perform better so later artificial intelligence researchers develop more robust kbs so the moment the artificial intelligence researchers came into the uh, research area to develop the kbs this kbs has become the enormous one and that now the industry is uh, using this kbs in almost everywhere so that's the with the help of the artificial intelligence researchers we were able to achieve so uh, but in initial stages uh, the people were calling this um, kbs as expert systems so in fact the kbs and expert systems of course both are something similar but um, expert system is just a subset of uh, knowledge based system so knowledge based system is much 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 bigger or wider when we compare with the expert system so usually the people are having a bit confusion between these two both knowledge based system and expert system both are same um i i would say yes both are almost same but a uh, knowledge based system is much wider much stronger much powerful than the expert system um let me tell you what is exactly the expert system is so expert system is just we, we can replace a human expert in a complex task so tasks can be of any any type it can be diagnosis uh, or monitoring something or uh, when we are designing something or scheduling or planning or whatever so in all these we know in the traditional uh, approaches uh, we'll be using the human for doing all this and the, once the expert systems came into the existence uh, these uh, systems i mean this traditional process was replaced by the expert system so how exactly this expert system works it just uh, again uh, a computer program it completely uses the if then uh, conditions so it's represented as if then rules rather than the through uh, uh, conventional procedural codes it, it's just say uh, if then rules how exactly we do in the computer program so we just state some sort of questions there we give if and then we go for the then likewise 
and then uh, knowledge based system what exactly the knowledge based system so knowledge based system it is an architecture that represents the knowledge this is a huge difference between these two systems in expert systems what we do we'll be just replacing an expert is just uh, we will take some questions and we'll give some answers and just that the that complete question answers will be written in the form of a program and we give that program to the computer and that gives a solution but whereas in the knowledge based system of course it's uh, almost same but this system will have the knowledge that means it can think just like as a human it can make the decisions how we do based on our knowledge so so knowledge based system uh, provide with lots of high quality specific knowledge so you may get um, wondered how can we give the knowledge to the system yes we can give the knowledge to this that's a very complex uh, program uh, to develop but if we're able to develop the uh, complex program uh, with the help of some uh, database then we can call that database is a knowledge driven knowledge based system so in real world what exactly the kbo system is so in real world the we, we all know in real world the problems do not have well defined solutions because if it's really if you call anything as a problem that means it is not having the solution if anything is having the solution we won't call that as a problem right so in in the previous case there is a, a expert system we can uh, tell that if um, we are having a solution for a particular thing then we should not call that as a problem there what are the problems that system is facing in fact they are not the problems right they're just the tasks to be done because the solution is already ready made there if something is the uh, task to be done then this must be done so that's why is uh, that why is the complete program has been written so in the expert systems uh, the thing is just a, a routine job but in the real world in the real uh, market and the real industry so we cannot expect so we cannot uh, we, we, we even we cannot guess what's going to come now so that's a bit difficult so that's why in those scenarios we require to have these knowledge based systems so i call the knowledge based systems are much 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 powerful than the expert systems so how it exactly was and what exactly it uses so knowledge based system uses uh, its uh, uh, knowledge uh, its knowledge is to create and represent the solutions uh, so its knowledge is to create and represent the solutions next how it uses it uses uh, heuristic cause and effect rather than algorithms and it uses the knowledge base so this is the one that's a very powerful one the last point it uses the knowledge base so let me tell you what is a knowledge base and how exactly we use it okay so in the next slide in this slide let me tell you what is a knowledge base is so in this we can uh, know what the, is the knowledge base is so knowledge base is simple just like as a, a database but it contains uh, the many things in it there are they can be rule uh, sorry they can be rules objects attributes hypotheses relations uh, definitions events processes facts uh, heuristics many things so knowledge base is one that yeah, one second. Uh, so this knowledge based systems, uh, knowledge base, knowledge base is the combination of all these. So it contains the rules, objects, attributes, facts, process, diagram, everything. So it is. If you, if a common man looks at the knowledge base, it, he can just simply say, just like as a database. Yes, it's just like as a database. But that data is interlinked with logical in, in a logical manner then we can call the database as a knowledge base so that is the actual difference between the database and the knowledge base in the database just we'll be having the data there won't be any inter logical interlinking between those two whereas in the knowledge base those data are linked logically okay so that is the powerfulness of this so database contains organized collection of facts about the respective domain like question answer documentation so what it exactly contains it contains the question answers documentation 
and frequently asked questions and uh, how to uh, how to guides and uh, troubleshooting instructions and the experience of the expert uh, some uh, thumb rules from the expert all those things are uh, given in that system so that is the knowledge base so in if you ask me to tell what exactly the knowledge base system in just one slide so this slide can give that so it is built around the knowledge base that is a collection of knowledge taken from an expert and from the uh, internationally recognized standards so the knowledge can be can be from the expert and at the same time the knowledge can also have the international standards so who is an expert who is an expert he can be an uh, academician industry or professional or experienced person whatever whoever so he is the expert then what about the standards so standards are uh, we all know iso standards or agm standards asgm standards likewise we have many standards like right? so those standards are all uh, will be incorporated in the database uh, i mean sorry in the uh, knowledge base so that it can reason with all that data and it will be able to give some solution to us so knowledge is stored in such a way that the system can reason with it that means system can do something with the knowledge the purpose the purpose of kbs is to hold the experts knowledge and experience as well not only the knowledge it even it can uh, have the experience of it of course based on the experience we can have certain thumb rules right next uh, it consists of um, uh, data rules relations etc and linked in a logical manner that is the more powerful one so if that all the data is linked in a logical manner then we can have the power we can get the power uh, from that um, system so i hope uh, you, you came to know what is a knowledge based system is so this is how its architecture looks like this is a very simple one in fact that don't be this simple but that that is a bit more complex but i try to make it a bit simple so in the left side a user will be there so he'll be just asking some uh, query to the knowledge base so here you can see there is a, a dotted rectangular box right that is the knowledge base system kbs okay so uh, for for every system if you wanted to use it's supposed to have one uh, gui it's supposed to have some face to it so for that we will be developing the graphical user interface so the user will be trying to ask some question or he, if he is having any problem or if he having any question he'll be asking the knowledge base system with a gui so that means kbs systems will be having the gui and that gui will sense that data to the inference engine this is the brain of the complete knowledge base system inference engine is just like as a human brain and that takes the input from uh, uh, i mean from gui and that thinks by itself whether the solution can be really uh, given or not or if it's not able to give what is the alternative for that and if it is able to give what should be the solution all those things uh th this inference engine will do again it's a simple uh, uh, sorry again it's a very complex um, computer program and how exactly do so it takes the help of knowledge base so i told you in the previous slide what is a knowledge base is so this inference engine takes the um, um, knowledge or takes the decision from the knowledge base and it uh, reasons with it and it do some um, uh, iterations on those and then it sends gives back to the user stating that that can be done or that cannot be done or that uh, that that should be the alternative for that so those things will be uh, given to the user through the gui so this is a simple form of kbs then what exactly these two are in the right side you can see the domain expert and the standards so knowledge base definitely require the domain expert in the previous slide i told you we require to have the expert to give the knowledge to the system so it knowledge base takes the knowledge from the uh, domain expert and even it takes the uh, standards all the data standard data so this is how the architecture of the kvs looks like so 
the mode of um, acquiring the knowledge from the design expert is by interviewing him or watching or spending some time while he's uh, working with them. So how can we get the knowledge from the domain expert? Even the domain expert can be, um, even can he can be a scientist or even he can be just an operator of any machine, whoever it is. We must take the, uh, we must take the knowledge as well as the, their experience, right? So how to get that knowledge? That is a very, very, very crucial thing when you are developing the knowledge-based system. Of course, knowledge, knowledge base is not that difficult to develop because of the existence of the powerful of uh, other uh, uh, computer technical knowledges. Of course, we can do it, but the acquiring the knowledge from the domain expert is a more, more, more crucial thing. So how best you are acquiring the knowledge from the domain expert and your, develop, your KBS system will be that powerful. The mode for acquiring the uh, knowledge from the design experts is just by interviewing them, just, uh, just giving some questions to them and we'll be taking them uh, answers from them. And then just by watching them, how exactly they are working on a machine, how exactly they are working on a particular problem, by just watching them. And we'll be keeping all those things in the knowledge base. So this is in simple words, uh, if you ask me what exactly the knowledge base is, uh, so this is it. So this, slides, uh, this slide gives you the, uh, what exactly the knowledge base system is. So what, how can we use this knowledge base system for our thing? modeling. So this first um, uh, point gives the same. So to deal the dynamic changes in the customer requirements of the present day volatile market, knowledge-based systems are vital because we all know the customers are always changing their minds towards their requirements. They always want a new component. They always want a better component. Uh, today, their needs is uh, one and tomorrow their needs are different. Just one or two days, their needs are becoming changed because the volatile is real. The, the market is really volatile, right? We can even see their uh, smartphone uh, market now. So today we are having a smartphone in our hand uh, with some uh, configurations. Tomorrow that's getting upgraded by drastically, and day after tomorrow, one more new, uh, um, uh, new uh, what we call. Uh, um, new technologies coming into the existence. So this is how the things are doing better. So the market is really volatile. Um, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, again, I'm getting the messages from our colleagues uh, stating that they are not able to join. I don't know why, some technical issues there. Let me come back. Sorry for this uh, again. So knowledge-based systems are really uh, required for the uh, today's volatile market because uh, they can give the solutions then and there and they can uh, give us the way how to do it or how to solve it. So knowledge-based CAD systems serves to solve practical problems using accumulated knowledge because we all know if we wanted to have the new component, uh, if we wanted to design a new one into the market, then naturally we're supposed to have um, uh, the complete knowledge base system. So if you wanted to have a new one, uh, new sorry, if you wanted to design a new one, new component, then you must do right from the scrap, right? Or you will be doing some alteration, uh, alterations to the existing one. So this uh, knowledge base system definitely helps in that regard. So it is known that CAD is recognized as a significant tool to achieve the better design and manufacturing. So the entire world knows now that they already recognized and uh, believed that CAD is the only way uh, where we can be able to achieve the better designs day by day. And that is the most faster one as well. So if you combine this knowledge-based system or if you use the power of knowledge-based system to the CAD modeling system, then definitely we can achieve the um, requirements of the present day market. Okay, then what is actually the CAD modeling is? So broadly, CAD modeling is of two types, variant type and generative type. What are these two? The first one, variant type is, uh, it evolves from the manual CAD modeling. Variant type just evolves from the manual CAD modeling. That means uh, whatever the traditional process we are following, that's called the variant type. That means uh, if you wanted to, 
uh, model anything what we do we just start with the uh, lines or circles or curves and then we'll be extruding it revolving it uh, uh, we'll be making some cuts in that likewise this is a traditional process right so this is the variant type then what is generative type so generative type is uh, uh, something like is it retool process that means we already have that uh, cat model uh, in the database we just retrieve the same and we make some alterations to that so that it will it needs it, sorry so that it meets to the new uh, requirements of the customer that means enhance the existing one so the entire present day market is uh, going with this every day we are not getting a very very new component we are just getting a component that is already existing the uh, yesterday but making some new changes in that making it better right so that means what we are doing is we are just taking the previous one and we are making some alterations in that and that means we are make we are enhancing it or we are optimizing it and then we are uh, reeling into the market now right so for that the generator type is the best way of doing it so this knowledge based system really helps uh, to the present day market if you are using the generator type okay what exactly the generator type is so generator type the computers are used to identify the similar model so first what we do we just identify the similar model and uh, in generator type we can uh, do the design calculations but automatically we can automate the design calculations an automatic cat model can be easily generated that is the help of uh, uh, if you are using the generator type with the generator type we can um, easily do the um, we can automate the modeling and with the predefined uh, frameworks or logical algorithms and geometrical data the uh, the automatic uh, cad model can be generated so and the more help from this is without human intervention also we can do it that is another advantage with that so that means it's much much easier if you wanted to automate so based on the user requirements the system can generate the required cad model yes just with the requirements from the just by taking the requirements from the uh, user we can develop the cad model next the required knowledge to generate an uh, automatic cad model can be encoded as the computer program so what exactly the cad software of course uh, this slide is uh, everyone knows uh, about this but just uh, to make you aware again this i'm making it so we are know uh, cad is a beneficial tool to eliminate all sorts of production problems by applying knowledge and expertise in the specific domain and uh, the, uh, for the, my uh, today's explanation on this uh, i have used the i wanted to use the solidworks software of course any software i can use but i've chosen the solidworks software because it is having some advantages okay i'll tell what are those advantages with solidworks the uh, commercial cad software solidworks is used to be one of the best is said to be one of the best uh, uh, designing mechanical component uh, software uh, then solidworks supports the cad automation with the vba that is visual basic for application next solidworks api this is another uh, um, very very important tool if you wanted to automate any task that means application programming interface so uh, traditionally the cad modeling approach is a time consuming you may uh, contradict with me sir how can we say that cad modeling approach is a time consuming because that's a, when you compare with the previous days that's much 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 easier one yes you are right but for tomorrow's world that time whatever the time that we are taking for modeling is also not acceptable we must be able to do much 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 lesser time so that's why i'm making this statement traditional cad modeling approaches is time consuming yes next why uh, we are not going ahead with the traditional is because this is one of the reason a small change in the shape or size of the component in an assembly will cause a significant changes in the dimensions of other components because of the interrelated parts suppose if you take any assembly and if you um, make a small change in the uh, in, if you make a small change in any component of uh, assembly then the interrelated uh, issues will be there if you wanted to change uh, uh, a dimension of a particular component then the other component is supposed to be changed because that's a assembly right so those things will be there 
So let me take uh, a small example here. I'm giving you some components here. Uh, look at them components. They are not same. They are not same, right? Suppose the left extreme one. Uh, if uh, we wanted to develop this one, of course, we'll be developing traditionally. Because uh, after some time, because of some reason, all of a sudden, if we wanted to have this one, what can we do? We just go back to the CAD software again. We need to do the same again from the scrap, right? From the scrap. That's a, a time taking one. Because we already spent some time on this. Again, if we wanted to make the changes, we need to go back from uh, to the first step. That's a definitely a time consuming. Again, if, because of some reasons, if you wanted to go to this, again, we should do the same. Again, uh, we must go to the scrap. Again, for this, again, for this, again. For this. Suppose if this is the case in the industry, that means they, they are getting uh, changed because of some reason, then this CAD approach is definitely not suitable. The traditional, I'm sorry, the traditional CAD approach is definitely not suitable because the things are getting changed drastically. But if you want to develop all those, we're supposed to do right from the first step again. This definitely the time consuming one. So if you wanted to address these issues, then we must do something else. So as a result, the CAD models need to be done again with modified dimensions. So that is a complexity here. So to address these issues, we are having a technique called parametric modeling technique. So with this, we can address all these issues. And if you are able to use the knowledge base system uh, with this parametric modeling technique, then we can achieve the uh, then and there solutions. The solution is the development of knowledge based system for the CAD model generation. Next, what is a parametric modeling technique? It is simple a CAD modeling technique, but when you are modeling something, we'll be uh, uh, parameterizing all the values. Okay, in the yesterday's uh, 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 presentation also, Mr. Karthik told the parametric uh, technique is a very useful one for the today's market, right? So. So this is a technique where we'll be parameterizing all the uh, tasks to be done. So that is a very, very useful one. So in fact, before the existence of this uh, technique, the people, the CAD models are really facing the difficulties for making the changes in the existing model. So, so it focuses on the steps in creating an object and parameterize them. That is the advantage with this. So it supports the automation automation also. So that's why I've chosen this parametric modeling technique for automation. Next, uh, it, this uh, simple one, I want to tell you that. Uh, so this is a hexagonal bolt. It's a very simple uh, one. So this is a hexagonal bolt. Uh, we all know that this bolt dimensions are all dependent on the D, this diameter here, right? The D, that's a nominal diameter. So this all the remaining, that means the uh, uh, thickness of the uh, head and uh, um, width across the flats or width across the corners, all dependent on the uh, uh, nominal diameter, right? So what we do is when I'm trying to uh, model the cat model, when I'm trying to model the hexagonal bolt or any other bolt, I try to give the relation with the D uh, for um, giving the values for all this. Okay, that means we just use the formulas. That means you can see at the right, uh, the uh, left bottom corner. So the nominal diameter, if the D, then width across the flats must dependent on the D. That is a completely dependent on the D. Then width across the corners is also dependent on the D. That means what I'm trying to say here is, if you wanted to draw the, uh, something, if you wanted to model uh, some component on the CAD software, you better give the dimension in this way. That means a parametric modeling technique. You're indirectly using the parametric modeling technique for that. Okay, fine. Uh, and about this one, the length of the bolt is not dependent on the D value that we're supposed to remember. The length is not dependent on the D. So that is an independent variable. That is independent, but the thread length is dependent on the D value. You look at that, that dependent on the D value. And at the same time, that is again dependent on the L value. If L is less than 150 mm, we must go with this relation. If it is more than 150 mm, we must go with this relation. That means the length of the thread is dependent on the D as well as L, okay? So if you are trying to model the uh, hexagonal bolt, you're supposed to use uh, these formulas so that you can achieve the faster modeling. So 
in simple words uh, as because of the time constraint i'm just uh, going a bit faster so in simple words parametric modeling uses the mathematical equations okay fine so what is um, solidworks api so solidworks api is a tool which provides the integration between the different applications that means api that means the application programming interface is just a tool in uh, any software that makes us to integrate with other software as i told you before uh, we are having the some cat software and i wanted to integrate that cat software with some other system that is kbs how can we integrate with the help of this api so api facilitates the same and how can we do it so this api functions based on the many uh, softwares uh, here i recommend the vba for our uh, uh, explanation because that's a very simple one to integrate that and at the same time um, uh, that that's very useful uh, for the that, that's very simple for the uh, person who is not having the knowledge uh, knowledge on the programming also okay so here um, uh, i'm i i can able to access the uh, uh, functions of the knowledge base with the help of the api functions api is also having some functions and we know the cat software is also having some functions so with the triggering of the api function i can trigger the function on at the solid box so that helps me for automation so with the help of the uh, solid box api the automation of modeling assembly modeling and assembly of the component is possible by writing specific codes so next is vb language so i don't want to spend much time because um, most of you know about this so vb language is a very useful one and very simple one to develop the guis of course a very old one but still we can use it for developing the menus in the uh, softwares uh, or toolbars in the softwares uh, especially in the cad softwares when it is using the vba okay so this one and next is a very 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 important one macro macro in the cad software this is a simple program that can be understandable by the cad software is a very powerful tool for automation so this is a uh, this is a fragment of code which can store any operation and uh, what happens on the screen that means uh, if you wanted to do any uh, operation on the screen of the cat software at the back end this macro will be completely storing what exactly you are doing at the same time uh, it, it it stores and it is able to retrieve the same whenever we require that means it's a record and play it's a record and play we can record whatever the task you do on the screen and with this macro code we can play whatever you did already on the screen okay so this is a very very powerful tool for automation so macro file it stores the 3d coordinates of the drawing entity so with the help of uh, the macros and the parametric modeling technique we can achieve the kbs i'll show you in the coming slides how can we do it so this is how the uh, macro program looks like this is a very simple program this program uh, is uh, for drawing the rectangle that's it a simple program for drawing a rectangle okay so uh, this is uh, for the solid works okay in the top this is the commenting section and this is the declaration section and here this is the complete procedure section so here we'll be giving we'll be writing certain um, uh, syntaxes just like as uh, we write in the c programming okay here we can see the uh, front plane right that means with this code we are trying to select the front plane in the cat software and here we can see the create corner rectangle right create corner rectangle that means using this command sorry using this uh, uh, line we can create a rectangle on the screen of the cat software likewise there is a, a program that can be running at the back end of the softwares so that works on the macros so <clears throat> uh, this macro uh, we, we can be having the same macros in other softwares too this extension for the macros in uh, uh, solidworks is swb and similarly we are having the macros in ug and katia and we have almost every software is having the macros now uh, are these macros can be used for automating it okay so okay that's fine so that is about the introduction of impart now let me go to how can we use this knowledge based system for achieving the cad modeling so first what we do is uh, we will be developing the knowledge based system and we will be integrating the same uh to the cat software with the help of uh, macro programming as i told before and that cat software will be able to do the cat model with the help of uh, parametric modeling technique okay okay what what is the input for this system 
so that can be given by the user they are called the customer requirements so here the customer can be a layman or even he can be an expert so in simple words the input just input is just a customer requirement and output is a cad model that means the uh, user need not to do the cad modeling by himself he just ask the system to uh, get, to generate some component the system can be able to generate that component with the help of the knowledge base system okay so here the user can be an engineer as well even the engineers now this is what the scenario going on in the markets now doing on in the industries now the engineers have developed the knowledge base system for their particular tasks and they are using that knowledge base system for developing those cat modeling in the industry we are not doing the traditional CAD modeling processes. We are using the KVS systems for developing the CAD modeling. So the out in the, if you wanted to make the complete thing or online also, we can do it. OK, now in the coming slides, I'm going to show you how can we do it over online. That means over internet, how can we do it? Yes. So this is how in, in one slide, I can show you what exactly the knowledge based CAD modeling system is. So at the one end, we'll be having the user, and he'll be he'll be giving the instructions to the system to the through the GUI, and GUI will send the information to the inference engine that reasons with it, and it takes the help from the knowledge base, and that will send gives back some information to the user. Of course, this slide I already covered it in in other way in the previous slides. So so this is it. Uh, so here I'm trying to give you one small flowchart for drawing a bearing. I'm taking a very simple example here. Suppose I wanted to make a bearing. What is the flowchart that's supposed to use if you are, if I wanted to use this one? So it starts. And first, I will be collecting the information through the GUI. What are the requirements of the user? And then uh, I'll be calculating um, uh, uh, based on the re requirements, uh, calculating for getting the better solution. And then I'll be selecting the suitable uh, bearing from the database and then I'll go for modeling of the same Okay, so this is how the entire process goes off. So I'll show you in the next slide So this is a simple uh, Bearing um, this is a complete uh, screenshot video. So here. I'm trying to show you. This is a, 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 a Solidworks environment because this this Solidworks soft I mean, version is a bit old now. Okay um, here. I'm trying to um, uh, I'm trying to develop a uh, CAD, uh, I'm trying to develop a ball bearing with these uh, values. Okay, so what happens is after clicking the uh, calculate button there, uh, at the back end, the knowledge base system took those information. Here, look at these are the input, right? That information, and it is trying to calculate what are the different uh, um, uh, possible bearings for these loads, and it gives here. Okay, here we can see different alternatives. These are all the bearing numbers. I hope everyone know what the bearing number is. So. The, based on the requirement of the user, he can select something. So he, he can even see what are the dimensions of the specific one. After that, after clicking the OK button or model button, the system is modeling the software by itself. Please observe the man, I mean, the human is not modeling this. This is completely doing by the software by itself. This completely program based one. And that program at the back end, which is running, is the macro. Look at it. Now we got the ball bearing. Now we got the ball bearing. With just a matter of eight or nine seconds, we were able to uh, generate the ball bearing. So I try to uh, uh, play it again so that you can understand. So you look at the same. So we are having different tools there. All these tools are developed with the help of uh, VBA. I told you in the previous uh, slides that we can, we can develop the buttons, right? So uh, the user has developed that. And he is giving certain uh, inputs uh, to the system, stating that I want a ball bearing, which must uh, take all these loads. That means radial load, axial load, speed, average. They have given something, average uh, life of that. And after clicking the calculate, the system is developing it. So the system is calculating it for choosing the suitable one. After choosing the suitable one, we will be able to see what are all the suitable bearings. So all these bearings are suitable for these loads, OK? Suppose if you wanted to have this bearing, yes, we can do it. And we can ask the system. So here, what I'm trying to show is what are all its dimensions and life and all those, OK? So after clicking the uh, button, model button or OK button, the system is generating the ball bearing by itself. 
okay this is it so this is the simple introduction of this next let me go to the bit complex one yes you can realize how uh, you can realize the powerfulness of this uh, knowledge based systems now right so let me go to the next slide so in this slide i try to view the same uh, 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 I, i'm trying to use the same knowledge based system for developing the spur gears so uh, this is the latest work uh, in the, by in the software in the latest software of the solidworks we have developed a small button of course it's a very simple one very simple task uh, creating all this okay so here i'm trying to use a knowledge based system for generating the spur gear so for that we have developed a small button in the cat software and uh, behind to the button we have developed the knowledge based system and uh, a macro programming and parametric modeling everything is there so after clicking the button at the left side you can see this is the gui we developed for developing the spur gear as it is a knowledge based one we need not to give all the information because our system is having the knowledge it can decide by itself right so what are the information you have just give that that's enough it will decide which is the suitable spur gear for that at the right side you can see uh, certain inputs so these are the inputs i have given uh, uh, for the system okay so here all the information i'm not giving it okay so based on that input the solidworks software is able to generate the spur gear by itself and it is showing the dimensions here i'll show you in the coming in the coming slide the complete video how it exactly uh, develops okay so this is the based on the uh, those inputs this is the uh, recommendation by our uh, knowledge based system and this is the uh, gear that developed by the system not by the human by the system so look at this one the total time taken is just 54 seconds it's just 54 seconds it's not minutes seconds so that is the powerfulness of this so if you look at the traditional one definitely it takes 150 to 200 man hours for doing this spur gear as per the industrial requirements okay so in this slide uh, i'm going to show you this is a complete internet based um, 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 uh, cad modeling generation of the spur gear so here uh, over the internet we are trying to give some information okay so in this one if you wanted to give some very minimal the system says that no with this minimal data i cannot do this per gear so it asks us to give some um, uh, minimum minimum uh, requirements so the user is trying to give uh, some other requirements whatever he is having and based on that the system can do it how exactly it do is after taking all this uh, information at the back end it will use the knowledge based system and it will generate the macro code that is a program used for CAD, used for more generating the CAD modeling. So now, please, after entering the all this data, the user will uh, uh, click on the OK button. Look at what happens now. Yes, now he clicked that, and he's, it, this, uh, with that, uh, the spur the spur gear can be designed. The knowledge base system told that yes, with this data, the spur gear can be designed. So now uh, it has computed all those, and it shows. So these are the uh, 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 dimensions required for your requirements. So after clicking OK, what happens is it's generating the macro code at the back end. Yes, it has given it, right? It has given it. Now, now the user is trying to download that code. You can see that. You can see the extension also. Now it's downloaded. Now we just use that file for generating the spur gear. Now you just open the SolidWorks software and you drag that program and drag it onto the software that's it that's the end this program at the back end that is macro code is executed by the software so it is a very fast process so we cannot see it i, I, I don't know how we are you are able to see it or not look at that so that is the output of that right so even the layman can be able to generate the spur gear so here when he can uh, we can see the dimensions of that okay so look at the dimension so this is the dimension that we got uh, with our uh, calculations right so this is the uh, powerfulness of the today's uh, 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 knowledge based systems okay
as I'm um, running out of time, let me uh, go to the next uh, case study. That is an important case study that we executed in the uh, industry. Okay, I hope uh, you understood about this, right? Fine. Yes. Let me go to the next one. So in this case study, this is the IBS, that is the industrial battery stack. So industrial battery stack. So this one I try to execute at the Amar Raja batteries. Uh, I hope uh, uh, you've known about this company, Amaron batteries, right? They are the manufacturers. Amaron, the Amar Raja batteries are the manufacturers of uh, Amaron batteries. Um, so I try to give some introduction about the company. It's a very, very uh, one of the best companies in India who produces the batteries. And almost all automobile uh, companies are the customers of there and they are having the thousand crore turnover and which is located at uh, Andhra Pradesh in the city called uh, Tirupati. Uh, well, I was, um, uh, 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 well, they, they were having some uh, issue with their uh, battery stack systems and they asked the help of mine, uh, my research work as well. So we were able to uh, give the solution for the problem. I'll tell you what is the problem and what is the solution that our system has developed. So at the left, you can see this is the, it's a stack that is uh, having the batteries. Uh, here you can see the green colored rectangular boxes, right? These are all the cells. These are all the cells. They're all interconnected, right? In a logical way to get the um, um, required amount of voltage from those cells. These are all the industrial batteries. Don't get confused. These are all the industrial batteries. Industrial batteries looks like this only. And this is the CAD model of those. And here you can see that there is a connection between those, these horizontal lines are the like. They are the connection that is positive to negative, positive to negative, positive. Likewise, there's a connection. And these are the verticals, right? They are the interconnections between the modules. That means this section is called the module. They are the interconnections. So here you can see the parts in that. Okay. So in the left and the right figure, you can see there's some part that's came forward, right? That is the cell. That's the cell. That's an, in fact, there is a bigger sized one that, that is almost uh, uh, seven inches by four inches. Uh, uh, cross section one and the depth will be almost one and a half feet. Then that is each cell. Okay? If you wanted to get the, that much power, we supposed to have uh, this sized one. Okay, so here they are having a small issue. The issue is, as it is a producer of the industry batteries, those industry people will come them will come to them and they ask that they are having this much load and they wanted to have the backup for this many hours. So what they do? They'll be generating those um, uh, batteries and they'll be supplying them. That's fine. But when they're trying to place the, so those batteries in the customer uh, factory, there the uh, problem arises. Because in the customer place, uh, the, the conditions are not favorable to this. Like uh, the floor area may not be possible. The height may not be possible. So they're not a standard one, right? So what exactly this company, the Amaraja company is trying to do is uh, they want to customize it. That means for the customer, they need to customize their own battery stacks. They are not the standard stacks because every customer requirement is different. So battery stacks to be uh, to be manufactured are different. So they, they, they are, they're not able to standardize it. So what the solution they asked is, they asked us to develop a CAD software uh, or to give a solution so that all these assembly things must be done automatically. So here I'm trying to give a small uh, CAD uh, 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 CAD of the same. Uh, one second. I'm again having the issues. I'm getting the instruction. I don't know. It's today is we're having the technical issues. I'm sorry. Somebody is asking me continuously for last. Okay, fine. Let me come back. So here, um, this is a simple CAD uh, modeling of the uh, battery stack. Okay. Here we can see all the internal components of those. So look at the left side one, this tall one, how complex it is. How complex it is just a assembly. So this is the module and this is the each cell. The B part, B figure is the cell. So with this cell, uh, we'll be assembling all those cells in a, each module and those modules will be uh, assembled in a stack in a logical way, okay? So here you can uh, see how exactly this uh, knowledge-based system works. So here, the customer is trying to give his requirements, like what, how much capacity, backup capacity, and how much AH you want, and uh, floor area, what is having, and uh, what is the total height of the uh, roof where he wants to get, and what is the 
uh, channel that they wanted to use and what is the total weight that their floor can sustain so all those things were taking so now after uh, just like as the previous case after clicking the ok at the back end the knowledge base system starts work and it takes all the information and chooses all the iterations and possibilities and then it gives a solution to them like uh, in the in the uh, way of macro code and that macro code will be again executed by the software we'll show you in shortly because it, it's a very complex one that way that, that's why it takes time yes now it has given it now the user is trying to save the macro code Yes, he has saved it. Now, just like as in the previous case, uh, he is again using the software for getting his own uh, 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 model of the IBS industrial battery stack. You can see the system is uh, trying to solve, so trying to model all those. In the right side, you can see, as it is a complete assembly one, in the right side, you can see the different components are completed. Now, it is looking at the, the module it is modeling the module so now the module is done now it is went for the next part that is isc uh, connector and then imc connectors uh, all these things are getting generated by itself the software is trying to do all those by itself with the help of the uh, knowledge base system so all these parts are getting produced in no time you look at the time here you look at the time here look at the time almost in just one minute it's done even assembly is also done in just one minute that's a really really advantage for the company yeah look at the uh, look at the left side it's just giving the summary of that and then you can see the complete assembly so if you uh, if somebody gives the tasks uh, to you to model all this just think of how much time it will take right yes the completely this this is the thing done by our knowledge based system look at all the components at the bottom the system has developed all those automatically Yes, so let me go to the next. So not only that, uh, we can even go for other types also. So the total time taken for developing all this uh, is uh, 19 to 37 seconds. Just realize the time there, how much time it took. 19 to 37 seconds. That is the very, 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 very important one. It's really helpful for us. So in one word, if you ask me what exactly the knowledge base engineering is. So till now I was insisting you knowledge base system, right? So knowledge-based engineering is just a combination of CAD and uh, KBS. Okay, so just the, then uh, whatever I told till now is the knowledge-based engineering. Okay, so the strength of the knowledge-based engineering is we can even use it in the CAD modeling or the analysis part, simulation part, or even in the manufacturing part. So with this, I'm uh, concluding to this session. session and uh, if you are having any queries, uh, you can ask me now, or even you can uh, email me. Okay.